leading, loving, living today, today, today. Greetings and welcome to Leading Through Living Today, where we help you become the leading person for your life. Today we have a very special guest, Miss Mary Ellis, who has a business, as you can see by this big beautiful button, <laughs> asked me for a plan to get out of debt. Okay, so we got to dive right into this. This is totally Sanji's wheelhouse <laughs> with the whole business thing, right? So Mary, tell us about this. Tell us about this. Well, this is exactly what it's supposed to be. It's an attention getter. Okay. <laughs> it you, is well, you got that. <laughs> it is designed to draw people in okay. so that I can tell them what I do. And what do you do? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> I specialize in um, making big, grand promises mm -hmm. and then delivering on them. That's I so like awesome. that. So that's what I do. I like that. Yeah. So how do you do that? You help people get out of debt, I assume. I certainly do. I help people to get out of debt. And actually, in addition to helping people get out of debt, I help people to establish and reestablish, if necessary, their uh, credit status. Now, awesome. I have to tell you all this. I was eavesdropping on a conversation Mary was having. That's how she wound up on the show, talking about a lot of the tricks that the credit bureaus play to keep us so that our scores stay low so that the interest rates that we apply for are higher and the companies mm -hmm. make more money. And so, if you don't mind, can you delve into that a little bit? I know I sure you didn't can. know I was listening, but I was like, that was very interesting. <laughs> it is, and I don't mind. And there are a lot of tricks. And the, let's start with the why. Okay. I learned a long time ago to start with why. Why would the credit bureaus do that? Why would they do that? I mean, we're their customers, right? Mm -hmm. Well, no, because we don't pay them. Actually, we do. We pay them. We, when we buy, pull those credit reports and we buy those extra services and all that, we're their customers, right? Mm -hmm. And customers are people who kind of come through the door and they buy some stuff every now and then. They're not really loyal to your brand. Mm -hmm. This week, they may buy your stuff, and next week, they may go and buy Sanji's stuff. Mm -hmm. So right. we're their customers. Okay. But they've got clients. Mm. Clients are people with whom they have relationships, okay. right? And those people are the um, the lenders, the creditors, people who extend credit to other people. Right. Yeah. So relationship. I'm sorry. Client suggests relationship, right? Right. Yeah. So if I am a furnisher of information, and the person with whom I have uh, a relationship says to me, "I need you to create a product for me." that I can use to determine if I want to take a chance on this person or that person. And what I want you to consider when you're putting this product together for me is um, do they pay their rent on time or their mm -hmm. utilities on time because I'm a landlord. Right. And they, that same person, I'm the same person, I also have a client who says, um, you know, we have this relationship and they say, I want you to create a product for me that um, I can use to determine if I want to take a chance on this person, but what I want you to pay attention to is if they've ever had any cars repossessed, because you know, I finance vehicles. Right. right. So we've got two, I've got one furniture of information providing two different people with two different sets of information on the same person. Okay. So I'm gonna to speak to you about some different things and I'm gonna to speak to you about some different things. You two are gonna pay me much more money than the person that you're deciding about. That's right. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So. I need to make sure that you're completely satisfied with the services that I'm providing to you. And in the 2012 report where um, the, the credit bureaus were asked about their customer satisfaction rate, it was at 95%. Their client satisfaction rate, excuse me. The customer. The customer doesn't matter. Wow. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Wow. The clients are what matter. So that's the why. Right, because people sometimes hearing some learning new information can be shocking to the system. Absolutely. So when I start talking to you about some of the tricks that they actually play, one of the first questions you're going to ask yourself is, well, why would they do that? That doesn't even make any sense. Well, tell us about so one of the tricks. So that's the reason why. Okay. So one of the tricks that can happen is this, and this happens frequently. Okay. You discover that there's something wrong in your credit report. It's very simple. Yes. It's, it's, it, my name isn't Sally Johnson, it's Mary Ellis, right? right? So I call up and I say, hey, y'all have me, you know, something on here for some lady named Sally Johnson. 
I need you to fix that for me. Mm -hmm. And they tell you all these hoops that you need to jump through. That's and, right. You know, That's right. Right. If you get someone, <laughs> right. if you get somebody. So you jump through these hoops and it doesn't get removed. So you call back and then they tell you you need to put it in writing. So you put it in writing and you send it and it still doesn't go anywhere. So then now you're mad and you're calling back and you're arguing and you're fighting and you're emailing and you, you're calling the creditor and the creditor saying, yeah, you're not Sally Johnson. We have no idea who you are and why you're calling us. This, okay, wow. yeah, we'll tell them that this isn't correct information. No mm -hmm. problem. They should take it off. And before you know it, it's three years later, you've got a room full of boxes with information where you've been disputing and fighting and arguing and battling to prove that you're not Sally Johnson mm -hmm. and the information is still there. Mm -hmm. Finally, you go get you a lawyer and you say, we go going to court and they say, oh, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. Here, here's $2 million. <laughs> we'll take that off your credit report because it costs them less money to do that than it does to make their client upset. Now, let me ask you something. Mm -hmm. The Fair Debt Credit Act says that if you write in, they have 60 days to fix it. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to investigate it and to fix it. Mm -hmm. It's called the FDCPA, the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, mm -hmm. and the FCRA. These are the two governing uh, le pieces of legislation that say what's supposed to happen. Right. right? So here it is. The FTC is the Federal Trade Commission that oversees the, the um, credit industry, right. right? So there is a sheriff. There's someone to watch out for you. The problem is, up until about 2012, the FTC wasn't really doing their job. They simply were not. If you, like I said, that example that I gave, right. if you went and sued them, then the FTC would say, yeah, you're wrong, you, you know, and, and pay that lady her money and then give us our cut too. Mm. So they as were kind fine. of, yeah, right. they were kind of uh, refereeing as opposed to sheriffing. Or fixing or making sure that it didn't they happen, doing policing it, making they sure that They weren't doing any of that. In place. They right. simply were not. And I'm going to tell you something else that's interesting. Y'all know I'm a little bit, just a little bit radical, right? Did y'all know that coming out of the <laughs> I would <laughs> think that by that lipstick necklace. <laughs> I love my lipstick necklace. I love it. Yeah, but I am. I'm a little bit on the radical that's side. Awesome. But I'm going to tell you something that <laughs> I'm going to tell you something that doesn't seem to be common knowledge. So the FDCPA and the FCRA falls up under U.S. Code uh, number 16. And U.S. Code, the U.S. Code is, those are all our laws, right? right? So there are 49 of them, right? USC 15 and USC 16 are the ones that govern consumer finance, okay. what, what, what our relationship is with everything. Do you know that those are the only two that have yet to be ratified by Congress? So in essence, they're more like acts. They're not really law. So you're saying that... So two acts as in pretending. I'm sorry. No, no, no you're I'm fine. Sorry. I'm just a acts as in pretending. Acts as in, you know... Actor pretending. You know? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like suggestions. Yeah, that, to, that's, that's what I basically. heard. Basically. Okay, now legal mind. What did, what did now tell us what No, said. no, I'm asking. So you're saying uh -huh. they're acts as in suggestions, not... Pretty, well, that's how they've been treated. I mean, if the FTC, if the Federal Trade Commission is the governing body, if they're the overseers, right, for what's going on in the credit industry and they overseeing it, but they're not doing anything about it, what do you call it? You know, it's interesting that we're having this conversation. When we come back, I'm going to tell you all something about the accounting industry and the SEC that you might not be aware of. We'll be right back. I am who Spaces by Liz is a skin and makeup consulting center that employs a holistic approach which incorporates regular treatments, nutrition, and a healthy lifestyle designed to prevent and eliminate beauty concerns. Education is a very important part of any skin regimen. Spaces by Liz are licensed skin professionals, specializing in a vast array of offerings that represent both conventional and traditional treatment styles committed to the best service and treatment programs.
And we're back with Leading Through Living today and our special guest, Mary Ellis, who helps people to clean up or establish credit. And one of the things that I said before we went back, I wanted to share something interesting with you. Mary stated that there are two codes of the um, U.S. Code that have not been ratified by Congress. And I'm not surprised by that. I did not know. Um, as many of you know, by trade, I am an accountant and an attorney. Um, the accountancy board is one of the only boards that is trusted to self-police. Mm -hmm. And so SEC, which is over the accountancy board, mm -hmm. trusts the accountancy board to police mm -hmm. its own it's body. Mm -hmm. This is how a lot of the things that have happened in industry, mm -hmm. like with Arthur Anderson, occurred. And so, no, it does not shock me to hear what you mm -hmm. are saying. I guess where I am, though, is what can we as singular citizens mm -hmm. do? Because hearing all this information, as I'm sitting home watching this <laughs> on my couch, it's very overwhelming. It can be. And so how do you help that individual fight Goliath? I mean, I, I feel like David yeah. with this big yeah. monster standing really over is. me. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, that's how I felt. When I was introduced to this, it was as a client. Okay. I was, um, I tell this story all the time. My husband and I had three children that were in rapid succession about to get out of high school. Wow. And we love these kids. They're great. They're smart. These are awesome kids, but we don't have road scholars. And we didn't know what was going to happen. All we knew was they were getting out of school. They had to get out of our house. You can't just turn the kids out in the street mm -hmm. with nothing. Right. That's right. right. That's okay. right. So I started praying. I, I started praying, and, and the thing that I was led to pray for was the restoral of my name. Mm. It didn't occur to me to ask God at the time to fix my credit or anything like that. So I, I prayed as I was led to pray, and it was to restore my good name, because at that time, I couldn't get a stick of gum in my name. Oh. Oh, Girl, wasn't nobody going to trust me for nothing. <laughs> this wasn't happening. So, I, um, so I prayed about that, and I'm, I'm home, and you know, I was kind of stressed about it. My husband was sleeping fine. <sighs> That's another story. We'll do a different show on that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he was sleeping fine, but I was up at night concerned about this. What's going to happen with these kids? And um, my, my cousin, I was up on Facebook that night, just kind of couldn't sleep. So I'm up on Facebook, and I noticed my cousin posting all of these, um, there were screenshots, screen grabs of um, credit scores, different credit scores, and they're like eight something and nine something. So I was like, what is going on? So I inboxed her like, you know, tell you, who, who's this lady? Who, who's this, what's the stuff you're talking about? And she said, oh, they're, they're, uh, they're credit reports. And I was like, yeah, so I can see their credit reports because they're right there on the screen. But like, what are, what are you doing? And she said, it's not me. It's a friend of mine. Her name is Regina. Call her. So, I, you know, I can't just, just tell me about it. And she's like, no, call her seriously. So I called Regina, uh, Regina Little. She's become, since then, she's become like my friend, my mentor. This is like you're my everything. eighth boom, boom. This, this is my girl. Okay. So um, I called her and our first conversation lasted almost an hour. And what did you, what was so the result happened, of that conversation? Well, yeah. the result is, is this. Okay. But what happened <laughs> that night was Regina started talking to me. She was, she's a teacher by nature. Okay. So she began to explain some of the things that I just said. And my spirit was leaping. And I was mad at the same time. I was really upset. Because it was, I realized that there were things, I knew something was wrong. I just didn't know what it was. I, I couldn't articulate it, and I had I didn't have the the knowledge. I didn't have I hadn't had any training, no experience, none of this stuff. I just knew that something was wrong. It's like there is no way in the world my credit can be this bad. What did, wow. what happened? Yeah. And I knew there had to be another explanation. And what she explained to me was how how some of these tricks that get played, the reaging of debt, for instance, the mm -hmm. selling, the, the debt market that's similar to the stock market where people are buying and selling debt back and forth all day long. And we've seen that with the mortgage industry. Yes, right. yes. 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 it wasn't. That? So it wasn't only that industry where right. these exotic um, um, uh, packages were, right. were packaged up together and sold off. All kinds of stuff was in there. Mm -hmm. And people were buying these debts not knowing what was in them. Mm -hmm. And she was helping me to understand that um, um, <laughs> I, know, I know you're an attorney and I don't mean to be offensive, but you know, <laughs> court is where you go to play. 
You feel me? So what she was saying to me was, um, if it's not in writing, it didn't happen. And a lot of mm. people are in bondage to debts that are illegal to, kick, to, to wow. collect because mm -hmm. the statutes of limitations have run out. That's true. But if you don't know that and you get someone suing you because you owe a debt. Right. From, and you're, you're scared. You want it to yeah. go away. Right. So you right. make a so deal. You, you, that's it. You show up at court. And, and this happened to me. I was like, I, had, I met her a day or two after I had gone to court and signed an agreement to pay off a debt that was what? about six years oh. old. Mm -hmm. And I had no, it was seven years old, because I remember later on I learned it was outside of the statute of limitations, mm -hmm. but I revived it unknowingly. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, I had gone to court, and there, and the way that this thing happened, I promise you, it was like hurting. So I'm in Cobb County Court. There is literally, there have to be 45, 50 different cases, and people are crowded into this courtroom. The magistrate gives everyone the same instruction at the same time as a group. And we're offered the opportunity to step outside of the courtroom and work a deal with the attorneys if we want to. Now, we're unrepresented. And because this is not a criminal matter, there's no requirement to provide representation for us. Mm -hmm. Right. So we out there so, uneducated. So it's called pro se. You're representing mm -hmm. yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we out there uneducated, have no idea what we're talking about and who we're talking <laughs> to, what we're doing, and, and, and I'm arguing about the amount. As opposed to, look, dog. It's the whole issue. Itself. <laughs> I don't yeah, even owe you this, and who are you anyway? Right. Because you, 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 you're third party. Right. I don't even. I, who are you? The, you? There's one name here on the document that's suing me, but you're somebody else altogether. Right. Who are you? I have no. So there are all these different things, and what the way that to answer your question, the way that I help people is I help them to understand what their rights are under the law. Gotcha. It is really that simple. Now, a lot of people, and this is funny, well, I probably shouldn't laugh. I laugh all the way to the bank because of it. But a lot of people mm -hmm. just don't want to do the work. Mm. They simply don't want to know. I have had people literally say, I don't even want to hear that. Just do it. And I say, okay, well, instead of paying this smaller amount, you're going to have to pay me this bigger amount, and I'll get the work done for you, no problem. And they you, pay it. And they well, just pay let it. Let me ask you this question, and mm -hmm. it may seem like simple. Well, at what point do you know, you know, I have a pretty good score mm -hmm. myself personally, but that doesn't mean that I don't need your services. This is true. That's so true. So at what point do you decide that you need to know? And then for people to understand, like when you mentioned buying these packages, mm -hmm. if you could explain a little bit, and I guess when Lanita takes us to the break, and we can kind of hit on that a little bit. Sure. Okay. okay. We'll be right back. And we're back with Leading Through Living today and our special guest, Miss Mary Ellis. And she was taking us through exactly how she helps clients. During the commercial break, we were laughing about the fact that she does various workshops and trainings and almost every one of them comes back saying with her evaluations, we need more time. And we kind of feel that way on the <laughs> show too, because this is a lot of information. Right. So Mary, tell us if there was one thing that a person could do on their own before they came to you to mm -hmm. really help you to expedite things, what would that be? The first thing you should do is check to see who is accusing you of owing money. If it is not the original creditor, then there's a strong likelihood that you no longer owe the debt. 
Wow. And hmm. if it's over your state's statute of limitations, you can't be sued for it, but you do have to answer. You must answer. Right. Don't lose your rights by not answering. So when she mm -hmm. says answer, she means you must respond. So mm -hmm. pretending like you didn't receive that right. summons does not make it go away. Mm -hmm. If you do not answer, then a default judgment mm -hmm. is entered, mm -hmm. and that then allows the creditors to file Garnishment, mm -hmm. again, all of wow. you have seen that yep. with cousins and family members, preferably not yourselves, mm -hmm. against your check, right. they can levy against bank accounts, mm -hmm. they can levy against just about anything that you own. And some employers don't like garnishment. They will put it in your package and your write-up. That's that it right. It could be determination. That's right. From the business strategist, then well, yes. they can put it in there mm -hmm. like, we, will not, we don't have time for this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I have right. a friend who paid off her vehicle, paid it off, excited and it got picked up. Mm. She had an outstanding debt that she had owed for over 10 years, but she had gotten a summary judgment and she paid off her car. She now had an asset and it was taken. Mm -hmm. It was taken. I just wanted to ask you, Ms. Mary, quickly. We, um, what would you say to a common person whose credit is really bad and they see all these signs on the street, fix your credit, free, fix oh, your credit, yes. I'll fix your credit. What will you say? Because it's very tempting, you know, you say, I can fix mm -hmm. a credit in 30 mm -hmm. days. What well, you... first of all, um, the first thing I would say is it didn't take 30 days for your credit to get messed up. So if you think your credit is going to be fixed mm -hmm. in 30 days, you're probably going to the wrong person. So I, this is not a diet pill. This no. is not magic. No, it's not. It is a process. Yes. It is a like process. Like you gotta go to the gym every day. Right. Exactly. You gotta eat right. You gotta drink your water. You gotta cut back. You know? Yes. And, and, and ask questions. And ask stuff. people, ask people questions. If someone cannot explain the why, if someone cannot explain their how, Ask questions. There was a commercial, you probably remember this, when we were coming up, there was a, uh, a men's clothing store in Miami. They had a television commercial that used to run and it said, an educated consumer is our best customer. <laughs> <laughs> Ask questions. That would be my first answer. Ask questions. And if they don't, if they get upset because you ask a question, that is a clue. Clear yes. sign. Yes. To keep moving. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you advertise? I assume you don't have the yard mm -hmm. sign out there on the corner. I do not. I, and I don't. And there's a reason why I don't. There's, there are a couple of reasons. The first is I actually screen my clients. All money mm -hmm. is not good money. And I'd rather oh, sleep at night. So that is I so true. I would Ooh, rather sleep so at true. night. You're starting to preach. <laughs> yes. Yes. Also, I offer a money back guarantee. Mm. So if you pay me the sums of money that I ask for, to get you the result that you're looking for, yeah. and you don't get it, you follow my advice, you don't get it, I'm giving you your money back. I don't wow. want to fight. So I give that guarantee. Therefore, I have to be really selective about who I'm working with. Right. That's right. I work with people, and it's not even about their credit. It's about people who are going to follow the instructions. That's yes, awesome. that's right. So if you're, we're, we're partners in this, this is a coaching relationship. I'm the coach. I can tell you the plays, you got to run them. It's almost like a money therapy. Like, I'm in mental health, but you're in money health. Yeah, that's it. I, I like, like it. I money health. Yeah. 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 Mental Absolutely. health, money health. It that's is. right. Yeah. Exactly. That's it's what I do. So, I, I, so most of my advertisement is on social media. Um, but I'm learning that word of mouth is traveling oh, yeah. quite yeah. a bit faster yeah. than I than and, I and I'm sure that button helps a lot too. <laughs> Ask me. <laughs> Ask me. Yeah, and I, you know, and awesome. I have those. I have really colorful flyers that I pass mm -hmm. out. Now, psychology told us, you know, some years ago, uh, marketing psychology says bright color sales. So yeah. I have beautiful flyers. And I had a, a gentleman one day say to me. Um, he looked at my flyer. He didn't read it. He just looked at it. And he said, "What do you do?" And when I told him what I did, he said, you look quite, you look too glamorous to be doing it. I was like, bingo, but you won't forget me now, will you? <laughs> Aww, that's awesome. So, so I do things like that, but most of it is, um, and also, of course, you know, I'm on the radio. Yes, tell we, me about your radio show. Well, our radio show, we, we're trying to find ways, and we, uh, uh, that I refer to as my friend Regina, who I refer to her as my friend now, because yeah. she was my coach. Mm -hmm. She certified me as a credit coach through her, her company, Cox Financial. Mine now is Golden Hearts Holdings. And our radio show is the Credit Reality Show, yeah. and cred the Credit Reality Show is also in the works. It's going to be a TV show. That's awesome. We're we're going to follow that some of our clients good. from starting until reaching their goals. Most of them are buying houses. Most mm -hmm. of our clients are buying houses. So I'm on the radio. We talk about this. We try to give 
more information. We try to help people. Yes. We try well, to share. Let me ask you this real quick. Mm -hmm. In the time matter, you know, we're talking about couples and families and people. What are, what are you doing for the businesses out there? That do you have like a, a business I do. matrix or something that you do? Or? We do. We do. We help people to build their business credit so that they're not having to be the guarantors for their own for their businesses. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's we awesome. help people build their business credit because if you if you ever get those mailers, some of them come in the mail yeah. um, or on in your box, you know, your inbox. We can get you some business a business line and you go to fill out the application and then there's a space for your social security number right don't fill that out don't do that because that's not you okay your business has its own social security number it's called an EIN okay mm -hmm. and see that okay mm -hmm. that's all right yeah but it does I didn't know that because I thought you know for me I got to keep my business because I am my business no you're my, not yeah your business if you got an EIN so okay. remember people united said that corporations are people too. So every entity that's legal has its own social security number. They all have nine digit numbers. And I told y'all I'm radical. Don't get me to don't get me started. Y'all don't have enough time on this show. <laughs> well now so, but I, I I gotta challenge you on that because okay. there are a lot of companies that will not lend to small businesses mm -hmm. unless the owner acts as guarantor and that is why they require the social security number. And from mm -hmm. their perspective you can't really blame them because I, I'll take myself as an example. Mm -hmm. For seven years I was practicing law by myself and so if anything happened to me, mm -hmm. nothing would be coming in and those creditors would not get paid. Right. So to answer that, mm -hmm. um, you, those lenders are not the right lenders, mm -hmm. if that's the case. The other, the other answer to that is that's what business insurance is for. Ah. If something happens to you, there is a way for your bills to continue to be paid. Okay. So you, there, there's more to it than, than meets the eye and, than, and what's on the surface. There are a lot of people who believe you can just jump up and have a business. And you can. Go ahead. Just America. I mean, you but can. If you, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but if you want it to run properly, if you want to be, a, be uh, profitable and successful and mm -hmm. all of those things, you have to do the thing right. I keep telling you, a court is where you go to play a game. If it's not in writing, it, it didn't happen. Like I tell my it is that simple. If, it's, if, if wow. it didn't write it down. Yeah, it is that simple. Paper. Insurance policies have cash value most of the time. So if you've got collateral, if your business has collateral, you can get a loan. You do not need your, your social. And you should not use your social for your business. Mary, this has been absolutely fantastic. Please yes. tell our viewers how they can get in contact with you from this point forward. My phone number is 678-856-3258. Um, okay. So that's probably the fastest. You can phone me or text me. I will respond, and I'm the one who's going to answer. Um, you can email me at mary at goldenheartsholdings.com, and it's plural because I'm so fabulous. <laughs> I'm on Facebook. I'm all over social media. If you Google me, you will find me. I'm on uh, Facebook at Mary Ellis. That's my personal. I probably shouldn't have given that one, but whatever. And um, I'm also, I have a Facebook fan page, uh, Mary Ellis dash Golden Hearts Holdings. Awesome. Uh -huh. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Uh, last episode, I took over CB's job, and she was like, no, honey, that's not how that works. So, CB, give us a uh, follow on social media. So, again, the hashtag is LTL today, and follow us on Pinterest, Instagram, and Twitter, and like our page on Facebook. Thank you so much for joining us www.ltltoday.tv to check out our most recent episodes. We so appreciate you and all of your support. Leading, living, loving today. today.